the YouTube Quinway coming to y'all with that instant analysis on the Lakers versus Suns. This was a competitive game for the most part. The Suns got off to a torching hot start. 38 points in the first quarter. The Lakers was only able to get 23 points total in that first quarter. They started they started to put some water on that fire when they held the Suns to 23 points in the second quarter while they was able to cut some of that lead with 29 points that they scored. And then they was able to continue getting it done the right way defensively. 24 points only for the Suns while the, the Lakers were able to turn those into easy baskets and consistent baskets because they made 35 points in that third quarter and they was able to finish the game with a 36 to 31 fourth quarter and the Lakers start off 2 and 0 and they really do look good as a team but we're going to start off talking about the Phoenix Suns the team that was scorching in the first quarter and they was making a lot of threes and a lot of opportunities and to be honest they still did ultimately shoot the ball well you know when the game was over but it just wasn't enough. They 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 figure out how to score. It's so easy for them naturally. Even some of the toughest shots they may look easy sometimes. But Kevin Dur Wayne Durant had 30 points and he was negative 13 and plus minus three personal fouls, three turnovers, one block, six assists, four rebounds, six of seven from the free throw line, two or three from the three point line, eleven of 17 from the field. He was efficient. He was getting to his shots. He wasn't rushing for the most part. He wasn't finishing some some shots um, the way you would like him to. He seemed like he was still a little hectic and a little scared trying to finish in the paint, but he was able to get something to go to. And obviously he was able to use his mobility to get to the free throw line. But you would like to see a little bit more out of use of Nurkic. 1 of 5 from the field, 0 of 3 from the three-point line, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. He also only had seven rebounds, one was offensive and four assists, one block, four turnovers, and four personal fouls, negative 19 and plus minus, and he only had four points. Just not exactly what you need, especially within 18 minutes. Jones, he was all right. He really turned the ball over a couple times. I hear a lot of people say he got a great assist turnover at Joe. He had three tonight, but he was 5 of 8 from the field. Had a big three that they needed him to make to cut that lead and give him confidence that they can come back and make a late game push to try to win the game. Um, 2 of 4 from the three-point line, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, 3 turnovers, negative 12 and plus minus 14 points. And Bradley Bill is a tough shot maker but he was dialing up from distance, three of six from the three-point line, had some step backs in there, six of 14 from the field, was able to get to the paint sometimes too and get to the mid-range. Nine assists, which they needed him to do because he can cause so much distraction because he's just so good as an isolation player that if you pay too much attention to him and what he's trying to do, you leave guys open. One rebound, two steals, one block, two turnovers, four personal fouls for him, negative 12 and plus minus 15 points. And Devin Booker had it going. And he didn't really quit until the game was over. Um, he even got a little steal and banked it in when the game was already basically out of reach. And it's kind of funny that he did that. And that's why I had to note it. Nine of 21 from the field, four of 10 from three, hit a big one to keep the, the game going. And the Lakers couldn't get comfortable. One or two from the free throw line. Um, three rebounds, two of them was offensive, four assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, three personal fouls, negative 10 and plus minus 23 points. Now the bench did decent. Um, 28 minutes for Royce O'Neal, two of five from the field, two of two from the free throw line, one of three from the three point line, four rebounds, four assists, one steal, two turnovers, three personal fouls, plus 14 and plus minus seven points. Done, three of five from the field, three of five from the three point line, three rebounds, one assist. Two personal fouls plus eight and plus minus nine points. Plumley still came in and scored efficiently three or four from the field. He also had seven rebounds. One of them was offensive, one steal. Four personal fouls plus 14 and plus minus six points. Um, number four, I don't want to butcher his name, so I'm just going to call him by jersey number. Six minutes, he didn't really do much because of that. One rebound, one turnover, three personal fouls. That's a lot in six minutes. Nine, negative nine and plus minus zero points. And Morris, two or three from the field, two or three from three. That was only attempts. Besides the free throw line, he ended up shooting two of them and making them. Uh, two rebounds, one of them was offensive, three assists, plus four and plus minus eight points. 
Bo Bowl and other guys didn't play tonight. They did shoot 42 of 82, 51% from the field, 17 of 37, 45% from three, 15 of 17, 88% from the free throw line. They only had 34 rebounds, and that was one of the things that cost them a lot. They didn't fight to get to boards. They didn't box out a lot, and they had so many scrambles where they ended up not getting the rebound, especially in crucial situations that could have changed the tide of the game and got them closer to cutting that lead to give them an opportunity to win, but it came up short. They did have 35 assists, 8 steals, 4 blocks, six tur 16 turnovers, and 26 personal fouls. They got into their offense a little faster, and they knew exactly what they was trying to do, and they also – try to take advantage of, of those quick situations because when you can shoot like that and break down the defense the way they stars can, it's hard to guard them when they have a, a first step on you or they have a screen coming and you can't see it coming or they're attacking you early just to get an easy layup or dunk or three because it's catching you off guard, which means it's basically almost semi-contested. You just got to get it off clean. But it'd be too late for them to really do a good enough contest to make you miss if you really as good as their guys really are at scoring. And that's what really gave them the lead in that first quarter because they was able to do that type of way, that new style of that 2K where I'm just trying to throw it to the highest guy I can get it to and see if he can just try to pick up from where he needs to on the court when he catches the ball and make a decision, even if it leads straight to a basket or him going all the way to the basket, which is a tough thing to stop, especially when you go against an older team like the Lakers. Anthony Davis has just been dominant preseason and regular season so far, 11 of 18 from the field, 3 of 17, 13 of 17 from the free throw line. He did have eight rebounds. One of them was offensive, four, uh, four assists, one steal, two blocks, one turnover, two personal fouls, plus four and plus minus 35 points. Rui Hachimura, five of 12 from the field, two of four from the three-point line, two of four from the free throw line. He did hit a big three that was able to put the nail in the coffin on the Phoenix Suns trying to come back. Um, seven rebounds, two offensive rebounds out of that, two assists, one turnover, one personal foul, zero and plus minus 14 points. LeBron, Raymond James, seven of 13 from the field, two of five from three, five of eight from the free throw line, four rebounds, eight assists, two turnovers, one personal foul, plus 14 and plus minus 21 points. D'Angelo Russell hit a big three in the fourth quarter, although he didn't shoot well from the field all night. He made the shot when it mattered. Uh, one of six from the field, one of three from the three-point line, two of two from the free throw line, five assists, one of was five assists, two rebounds, one was offensive, one steal, one block, two turnovers, three personal fouls, negative six and plus minus five points. Austin Reeves turned the ball over in the late in the game, but ultimately made the right decisions. Eight of 12 from the field, five of seven from three, five of six from the free throw line. If he can score this efficiently while still handling ball handling duties, I think that that's something that's really good for the Lakers. Eight assists, four rebounds, um, three steals, one block, four turnovers, four personal fouls, plus 13, plus minus 26 points. Hayes was three of three from the field, was at the right areas at the right time. Um, six rebounds, four assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, three personal fouls, plus five and plus minus six points. Uh, Vincent was two of five from the field, one of three from the three point line, two rebounds, three steals, four personal fouls, plus nine and plus minus five points. Christie, one of one from the field, one of one from three, three rebounds, one turnover, negative 17 and plus minus three points. Dalton connect, two of five from the field, two of four from the three point line, two of two from the free throw line, one rebound, two assists, one steal, plus 13 and plus minus eight points. And nobody crazy didn't play. 40 of 75, 53% from the field, 14 of 27, 51% from three. It's hard to lose a game when you're shooting that well, but the Suns did it too, so you only had to find a way to get stops, but you had to score at high efficiency just to catch back up in this game and build the lead so that way you can win this game, but the Lakers was able to do it, especially shooting 74% from the free throw line, 29 of 39, they still was able to get the W. They did have more rebounds, 37 to 34. They had 33 assists, 10 steals, 5 blocks, 12 turnovers, which is a good way to take care of the ball. It helps you get back in games, too. And they only had 18 personal fouls. That's good to do, too, if you're still trying to find a way to claw yourself back into the league and take the lead after that and end up with the win, which the Lakers was able to do, which 
I was not surprised that they figured out how to win this game because both teams are basically on the same level and it is a 48 minute game. So that always going to be in the back of your head. You got LeBron, you got AD on the other side of the court. We got to pay attention. We got to guard these guys seriously because they can really destroy our defense. And when LeBron checked back into that game, he was making sure he was making the right decisions finding the guys that he needed to find, setting them up for high percentage shots, and all they had to do was just finish them. And that's why LeBron is one of the greatest players ever. Not only can he score when he wants to, now he can actually shoot mid-range and threes, and he can facilitate at the highest level against some of the all-time greats. He's in that conversation, if not the best, depending on positions. But the best small forward passer ever is LeBron. It's not even close to even debate that. There's no point in even debating that. Because we already know that's factual. LeBron has been one of the most highly praised people in the entire sport, in the entire world, because his consistent play, even at his age, and he's still showing you how much he can impact the game. And, you know, he's, he's almost 40 years old this year, which he's going to be by the time the year is over. So LeBron is just on another level still. He's still one of the top 10 best players in the world because of what he brings to the court and what he brings to the table and what he consistently does. And this was a game where it was getting a little ugly. It was getting a little, oh, the Suns can make a run. And LeBron said, no, I'm just going to make the right reads and execute the right plays, even if I have to create it by driving, even if I had to see it coming and just make a picture perfect pass. It was just gorgeous basketball by LeBron and AD. They're one of the toughest duos in the game because you virtually, their bodies are so big and so athletic and so fast that it's always a mismatch no matter who you put on them. And they always have the patience to figure it out if that's what is needed to be done to get a decent look at the basket by valuing possessions. It's something they teach the kids and they show it so far at the highest level in preseason and during the regular season. I only got high praise for AD and LeBron after seeing what they did in both the preseason so far in the regular season. And that's why they did get off to a 2-0 start because these two players complement each other so well that it's just a tough team to beat, especially if you don't bring your A game and you don't defend or you give them the opportunity. They have enough shooting, they have enough ball handlers, and they have guys they can rely on to carry them like LeBron and AD when it's needed to be. And there's nothing you can do but just say, good game. Y'all played a great game, we gave our best chance, we did the best we could, see you next time. Because we still feel like we can get one off you before the season is over, is what you should be telling the team that you own. But you also gotta respect what they bring to the table as, as competition. Other than that, comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell for more analysis. And if you're new to the channel, I make videos just like this and breakdowns of the current legends, past legends, and future legends on my channel with real game footage. So if you don't want to miss that or you love content like that, I do this and videos like that and other type of content on this channel. But if you've already been a fan of the channel, like most people are, this is just a reminder. Check the channel frequently for more content that you may have missed throughout the day. Busy, work, sleepy, tired. I feel you. I understand you. But it's still good to still like, share, and show support to the channel that you love so much, which is this one. So thanks for the love. Thanks for the appreciation. I'm almost out of here, but I got one more to give you. I'm going to try to give you that Portland one. If not, this may be the last one today. But it was good having fun watching some hoops and telling you how I feel. So that's what y'all look forward to when I see y'all in person. It makes sense to do it on the website. That's how the channel got started. And it's just funny that it's still continually showing that was a great idea to do this full time. Other than that, see you guys later. Um, peace.